My name's John. Welcome to the third part in what's turned out to be a review on the Artec ACDC 200 amp TIG welder. I've been using the welder for a, a couple of weeks now, uh, finding out what settings are best for the sort of welding I do, how to set it up. Now, what I plan to do today, I'm going to do some TIG welding on some metal steel plate, DC TIG welding. I'll show you how to set the machine up, how to set the torch up, how to grind the tungsten, and I'll try and do some video of me welding through a welding screen. This video isn't trying to teach how to take weld. There's much better welders than me on YouTube that'll teach how to take weld. It's more to show how I got on with a machine doing what I wanted to do. In the last video, I showed you basically what the knobs and switches on the front of the welder do. I explained to you that on TIG welding you use positive earth, negative live. That tube there, that's a gas feed, an organ shielding gas that shields your tungsten when you're welding. That wire there is a control wire for the amperage, that goes to a foot pedal which I use to control the amperage while I'm welding. The machine can do pulse welding, I'll show you that later on. Right, the first thing I want to do, switch there, MMA, TIG. MMA is for stick welding, so we'll put that on the TIG welding. Arc force, that's for stick welding. Post gas, that's how much gas comes out of the torch once you stop welding. Shielding gas, we want some of that. That stops the tungsten burning and also protects the whirlpool as it cools down. That's your main amperage, we have to set that. That's your pulse amperage, we don't want that. That's the AC-DC switch, what I call the money switch on a DC, the switch there, 2T and 4T, that has to do with the control on your torch. We need that one on 2T to enable the foot pedal to work. These ones here, up slope, down slope and pulse rate, they do one constant one. So all we want, TIG welding, DC, 2T with a bit of post flow. I'm going to be welding 4mm plate. I'll be using probably 100 to 120 amps. I'm going to turn the machine on. I'll set my base amps at 100. Turn 130. And control how much amperage I actually use with a foot pedal. We need to set the torch up. I can see all going to be welding DC, probably about 100 amps. So there's a little chart comes with a handbook. It says a 1.6 mm tungsten will do 40 to 150 amps on DC. That's a red tungsten, a thoriated tungsten. You use different tungstens on AC for welding aluminium. We'll discuss that when we come to weld aluminium. Right, so take the torch apart. It has actually been a Quite a big tungsten in it. Right, so we've got a red tungsten, 1.6 mil. There's different length caps for the for the back of the torch. Got a long one, a short one. Long one means you can use a long long tungsten or cutting it, disadvantages, sometimes you can't get it into places. Right, so we'll put 1.6 mil collar to last screws into there. Collar drops in the back, back cap screws on nice and gently. If you look there's a, an o-ring there, a sealing ring, We've also got a Teflon, Teflon cup there that protects the TIG torch from the heat and also makes a seal between your ceramic and the torch. Ceramic screws on like that. You haven't got to go ballistic tightening this stuff up, just, just nip it up. When you put your tungsten in, put the red colour, the paint mark up over, it means when you take the tungsten out and you put it away and you pick it up you know what sort of tungsten it is. Goes into there. And you use the, 
the back cap to nip it up. Stick out your tungsten, you want roughly one and a half to two times the diameter of the tungsten. There's certainly no more than the width of your ceramic. The tungsten has to be ground to a point. For welding steel, you can buy a special tool for grinding tungstens. I just use a bench grinder, I'll be it a big one. Just a medium grade wheel. You see, there's no, there's no value, there's no guard on you. I've got safety glasses on. Then we'll start to grind that up. When you grind your tungsten, grind, grind it like that to a point, just a nice gentle point. Don't do it that way. Do it up and down like that. The idea is that the electrons will flow off the end of the tungsten better. That's all you need, just a gentle point on the end. Turn my bottle on. We're using pure organ for TIG welding. Your organ flow needs to be about 8 litres a minute. Flow gauge on there. You can set it by pressure but you end up wasting gas. The flow meter gives you, it tells you actually exactly how much gas you're using. What I'll do, I'll turn the machine on. I'll press the pedal, power it up, and see our flow meter rise. I'll drop it down to about 80 litres a minute. This is the metal we're going to weld. 4mm male steel plate. One thing with TIG welding is the metal you're going to weld must be clean. When big welding you can get away with a little bit of rust or some mill scale. With stick welding you can get away with paint sometimes. TIG welding you can't. The metal's got to be clean. You either clean it with a stainless steel wire brush or a flapper wheel or some sandpaper but make sure it is clean. Just going to do a simple, a simple T weld, weld in there. I'll tackle it up first, we'll try and get a shot through a weld, through a welding lens and you can actually watch the welding pro progress. Right here we've got an outside corner joint. I'm going to weld it with a pulse on straight across there. We we'll probably won't need any filler wire on this weld. Right, we want to set up a pulse welding so I'll turn the base current down to about 30 amps. The pulse current I want it about 110, 120. It's going to go, it'll go 125. Then down to 40, 105, 40. This knob here controls how often the pulse occurs from about one to second all the way up to really fast. This control here controls the width of the pulse, how long the heavy side of the cycle is on. This is a simple lap joint that I'm going to weld with pulse. I'm going to use a base current of 30 amps in the top end of 90 to 100 amps. I'm going to pulse it about once every second. Now 
there'll be times when you're tin welding where you simply can't operate a foot pedal. You could be up a ladder, jammed in behind somewhere and you just can't get your foot under the foot pedal. In this case, you've got to use a switch on the end of the torch. This is where your 2T and 4T switch come into play and your upslope and downslope controls on the welder. Obviously with the foot with the foot pedal you can control the amplitude, you can feather it in from nothing to whatever amps you want and ease it back out. With the trigger it's no good having it you start and press it and bang you get 100 amps, you're going to blow holes and things and when you come to stop it you want it to stop gradually otherwise you'll end up with a crater. Right, I'll show you how to set up the upslope and downslope. The first thing to do is just connect the foot pedal, that screws off there. Foot pedal is disconnected. Just see a plug on the torch when it goes in one way, plugs in, the little ring locks it in place. Right, we've got two controls upslope, downslope. Upslope means when you when you press the trigger, instead of getting your maximum amperage, it gradually increases the amperage from, from zero up to whatever you've got it set to. It goes from 0 to 10 seconds, we'll put it on 5, which means it's going to take 5 seconds to go from no power up to your full welding power. Once the weld's finished, you want it to come off smoothly and slowly, so we'll set that at 7. 5 and 7. Next thing you need to set is your, your main weld amperage. You set that 100 amps. Trigger on now. Got a weld pool for 100 amps. Trigger off now. It ramps down nice and gently so it stops. Try it with a pulse on this time. So using my trigger. My power coming up. Pulse frequency starting now. Add the rod on the high bit. Off the trigger, slowly ramps down. Right, so that's caught a little bit about 2T torch setting. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to take the torch control out, put the foot pedal in, put a big electrode in, and wind the bastard thing up a bit on steel and see where it'll actually weld. I'm take that out. Back in. Now we'll take this tungsten down and put a big one in, 3.2. See now we'll put the, the tungsten in with a colour, in, leave a colour on the rod, and you, you know what. Get a tungsten it is. So I want a red one, red for steel, a big red one, 3.2 mil, 3.2 mil collet body. Maybe we want a 3.2 mil collet. Long back cap. Use a largest cup. Once again, tungsten in, painted in here over. I'll have to grind the point of the tungsten before I weld. Right, when you grind your tungsten, that don't do it like that, do it that way. A nice cone on the end, it focuses the off. This is what I'm going to weld. It's inch and a quarter round bar, solid on the inch and a half round bar. Weld it round there. 
try and get a shot through the the camera looking through. This will be good or terrible one or the other. Half inch plate, run a well down there. I think we've managed to cover a fair bit on the uh, DC Ting Weldon. In the next video, I'll be going to the realms of the AC, uh, weld aluminium, which is basically the reason I got the machine, so I can weld aluminium. Uh, weld thick aluminium and thin aluminium. All in all, I found the welder good. The only problem, the problem I've got, I don't like the torch. The torch is too heavy. Obviously the torch is, it's a 200 amp torch, it can weld 200 amps with it. I would think most of the time this will be below 125 amps, so I may get a lighter weight torch with a gas lens on and try that. The machine has got a good bottom end, it's got a good top end as well as we've just proved. But I think a lighter torch, the WP17 is what I'm used to, this is a 26. I also want to do some MMA welding, some stick welding. We'll take it outside and run some stick rods. Uh, using an inverter before on stick welding, inverter to be a very, very smooth, stable arc. It's a bit like welding with a, with a new old Oxford, oil filled welder, really good. In between this video and the next welding video, which is going to take quite a while to do, uh, aluminium is a complicated subject. And we're doing some more machining, I want to make a start. A second gauge for my boring bar, I'll get back on the lathe, drain the lathe for a little bit. Anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. <laughs>